I have some questions from the audience. The first question is, will the new sermon made by Kuzani be exactly the same as the Bayer version used in the first trial? Yes, the sermon made by Kuzani will be chemically identical to the sermon made by Bayer. The next question is, did the GI microbiome normalization that you found in phase one of the sermon trial last? Now, my answer is, remember that the SAT1 only gave a single dose of sermon. So the behavioral effects of one dose of sermon lasted for six to eight weeks. This was far longer than we had expected, but is still finite. Reports of the GI symptom improvement and associated improvements in the appetite of the children for varied foods um, also lasted for uh, the same amount of time. We did not measure the gut microbiome diversity in the children. However, we have done this in the uh, maternal immune activation, the MIA mouse model of ASD-like behaviors. So sermon treatment um, normalized the mouse gut microbiome in the MIA model. And, and this lasted for as long as the sermon was given, which was four months in the mice. When the sermon was stopped, the ASD-like behavior started to return in one to two months. I suspect, but I do not have any data, that the microbiome of the mice started to change again after the sermon was stopped. Remember that the mice, well, that in the mice, um, uh, you know, they were all eating the same food, that Purina mouse chow. Um, and that was given to both the, the, the animals with ASD-like behaviors and the control animals. So the, the difference in microbiome did not have to do with differences in diet or intake. So once, treat, once we started treating with suramin, healthy bacteria returned and unhealthy bacteria died back into the shadows. In control mice, we measured about 4,000 different species of bacteria um, in the healthy microbiome and about 3,000 species in the dysbiotic microbiome of the MIA mouse. After sermon, the MIA mouse uh, microbiome returned to normal and a rich population of the 4,000 species. Remember that sermon was not given orally, but rather given by injection. Therefore, the effect of sermon on the microbiome was caused by a change in the metabolism of the gut intestinal epithelial cells and had nothing to do with providing new or different bacteria in the diet. No change in diet occurred and, and probiotics or prebiotics were not needed to, to make this change. So, Regarding this, this point, I have a different perspective about the gut microbiome than many investigators. I see the microbiome as a rich ecosystem. This ecosystem is disrupted in all chronic illnesses, not by a lack of the right bacteria, but because of a disruption in the habitat of the gut that makes it impossible for the right bacteria to survive in the new unhealthy habitat. As with all ecosystems, the diversity of the organisms in the gut ecosystem is directly dependent on the structural and nutritional resources that are provided by the habitat. Collapse of a normal ecosystem occurs when the habitat is destroyed. In the gut, the mucus lining of the intestinal epithelial cells and the nutrients and cytokines that our host cells secrete are responsible for creating the habitat for all bacteria and other micro microbes that make up a health healthy gut ecosystem. Here's a thought experiment. If you cut down all trees next to a rainforest in order to make a savanna, it doesn't matter how many times you try to introduce rainforest animals like jaguars, frogs, and squirrel monkeys into the savanna, they will always leave the savanna and run back to the rainforest. Reciprocally, you can try to add all the polar bears you want, like a probiotic or an FMT-like intervention to a Costa Rican rainforest, and they will simply die out over time because they are not adapted to the habitat of the tropics. In the same way, adding a single good bacterium will not allow it to survive for very long in a hostile ecosystem. Likewise, a single good bacterium has limited power to terraform an unhealthy ecosystem and little chance to change it from unhealthy to healthy. Literally thousands of different species make up every ecosystem, including the gut microbiome. 
If an ecosystem lacks the structural and nutritional resources that are needed to create a healthy ecosystem, one or even several healthy bacteria will be like a polar bear in the rainforest. It will be hard for them to survive. To restore the health of a rainforest ecosystem, you need to start by replanting the trees. The animals without the trees will not last. Is there a way out of this dilemma? Yes. The cell danger response, or CDR, creates the gene expression and metabolic profiles of the intestinal epithelial cells of every child and every adult that creates the trees and the nutrients of the rainforest of the gut. I believe it is the set point of the CDR that is ultimately responsible for creating and maintaining the habitat of the gut microbiome. Have, the next question is, have any improvements in seizures been seen with sermon? This has not been tested directly yet. I believe that in the case of seizures in the setting of autism spectrum disorder, that Suramin will have an anticonvulsant effect by normalizing the cell danger response that creates the pro-inflammatory metabolism that can lead to some kinds of seizures. Not all kinds of seizures will be improved by Suramin. Um, we will be doing a clinical trial to look at this question in more detail in ASD. The fourth question is, when do you estimate the phase two of the Suramin trial, the SAT2, to be completed? And is enrollment still open? Well, let me start with the second part of that question. Enrollment to the SAT2 has not started yet and will not start until 2021. Kuzani is busy making enough Suramin for all the next studies to get the green light from the FDA to use this new Suramin um, in the next studies. And the SAT2 trial will, will, be the, will be able to start only when the COVID-19 pandemic has settled down and children can be enrolled safely. My best guess is that this will not happen until the fall of 2021. I'll post any updates to our laboratory website. You can check it out at naviolab.ucsd.edu uh, backslash science. Okay, so the fifth question is, how can we sign up to help with your autism newborn screening study that uses dried blood spots um, uh, to measure over a thousand environmental chemicals and natural chemicals that all children have collected and stored at birth? Well, if your child is three to 10 years old now and was born in California and either has ASD or not, you might be eligible to help. Um, no new samples are required, um, and everything can be done online. Please just click our website um, for the study at naviolab.ucsd.edu backslash study, and all the families who qualify will receive a $40 Amazon e-gift card as a token of our appreciation. So please check it out. We need your help. Thank you very much.